what is the difference between American bison and Indian gowers? Have you ever looked at a bison and thought, that has to be the most powerful herbivore on Earth, and then caught a glimpse of an Indian gower? Those thick curved horns, that hulking frame, eyes calm but unreadable, and wondered, wait, which of these is actually the strongest? It's a fair question. At first, both creatures look like titans from different continents, but their differences go far beyond geography. Their muscles, behavior, culture, yes, even culture, reveal two very different philosophies of survival. And once you learn what sets them apart, you'll never look at either the same way again. Let's start with the bison. The American bison isn't just a big animal. It's an icon, a living relic of a forgotten frontier. Once, tens of millions of these thundered across the Great Plains, shaking the earth beneath their hooves like living earthquakes. They weren't just animals, they were ecosystems on the move. Grazers, wanderers, life bringers, and warriors when they had to be. A mature bison bull can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. That's nearly a ton of raw muscle and momentum. Its shaggy coat shields it from blizzards. Its horns, short but thick, are built for blunt force clashes. And its shoulders are stacked high like a living battering ram. But despite all this brute power, the bison is not reckless. It's deliberate, cautious, almost solemn. American bison evolved to deal with wolves, with cougars, and, most fatally, with humans. They survived centuries of predators, only to be pushed to the brink of extinction by rifles and railroads in the 19th century. From a population of over 30 million, fewer than 1,000 remained. That should have been the end, but it wasn't. Thanks to fierce conservation efforts, the bison is back. No longer a wandering sea of fur and hooves, but still a symbol of resilience, endurance, and quiet strength. Today, they roam preserves, national parks, and protected lands. Their herds are smaller, their range fragmented, but the soul of the plains still intact. Now, let's go east, far east, to the misty jungles and sun-baked forests of India, where the air is thick, the trees ancient, and silence is a lie, because something massive is watching from between the trees. Enter the Indian Gower. If the bison is the warrior monk of the herbivore world, the Gower is its war general. Calm, confident, but terrifying if provoked. Scientifically known as Bosgarus, it's sometimes called the Indian bison. But make no mistake, this is no cousin of the American beast. This is something else entirely. It's the largest wild bovine on the planet. Let that sink in. A mature male gower can weigh over 2,200 pounds, sometimes close to 3,000. Taller than a bison, broader, and with muscle definition that looks almost unnatural. Their shoulders bulge like living armor. Their legs, thick, jet-black pillars. Their horns curve upward like battle flags, and their eyes, they don't glare, they measure you. Unlike the bison's thick winter coat, the gower wears a sleeker suit, a deep brown or black sheen that shines under the sun like polished stone. White socks climb up its legs, and a prominent ridge runs down its back, making its silhouette look like something out of an ancient legend. And in some parts of India, it is. Forest dwellers tell stories of the gower, how tigers, a predator that rules over the jungle, sometimes hesitate to attack them. Because even for a tiger, picking a fight with a bull gower is gambling with death. That's not to say gowers are fearless, but they're not passive. They've been known to form protective circles around calves when threatened. If one is attacked, others charge, together, fast, with no warning and they don't stop. So, what separates the bison from the gower? They're both heavyweights, both survivors, both living fortresses. But here's where things get interesting. The American bison evolved in the wide open plains. Its life revolves around movement, migration, grazing. Visibility is a weapon, and speed is a savior. When predators attack, bison herd together, placing the calves in the center. 
If a bolt charges, it hits like a freight train. But the bison's true strength lies in endurance, in withstanding cold, and keeping a herd fed and moving across barren land. The Indian gaur? It lives in shadows. It's not built to run. It's built to stand its ground. In dense forests, there's no room for speed. Instead, survival depends on awareness, intimidation, and explosive close-range power. The gaur doesn't charge across miles. It lunges like a wall collapsing. If the jungle is a maze, the gaur is the minotaur. And then there's the temperament. Bison, despite their size, are usually calm. Unpredictable, yes, but their default state is peaceful. You can find videos of tourists underestimating them in Yellowstone, getting too close, and learning the hard way that tranquility does not mean weakness. Gowers are harder to observe. They don't live in tourist-heavy regions. They're elusive, wary, and mostly nocturnal. But field researchers will tell you, if you lock eyes with a mature bull, don't test him. Because while bison will give you signs before charging, a gower won't. It decides, and then it acts. Even predators understand this difference. Wolves hunt bison in packs, using attrition and tactics. A healthy bison can still be outmaneuvered. But when tigers stalk gowers, especially bulls, it's a calculated risk. Because if they misjudge, even slightly, they could be gored, trampled, or killed. The stakes are higher, and the gower knows it. Socially, too, they differ. Bison herds can number in the hundreds, even thousands. Their size is their defense. Gower herds are smaller, 10, maybe 20 individuals, but they are tight-knit. Bulls sometimes live solitary lives, joining herds briefly during mating season, but when they do, they dominate. And here's another twist. Bison are almost exclusively grazers. They eat grasses, moving as needed. Gowers? They're mixed feeders. Grass, leaves, fruit, they adapt. They're less migratory, more rooted. Their world is smaller but richer in resources. That means they don't have to move as much. But when they do, it's with purpose. Now, let's talk legacy. The bison is a national symbol, printed on currency, painted on cave walls, and honored in countless Native American traditions. It represents the land, the people, the memory of freedom before fences. The gaur, meanwhile, is less globally known, but deeply respected in its homeland. In Hindu mythology, it's linked to strength and masculinity. In rural India, it's seen as a spirit of the wild, unbothered by roads or rifles a shadow in the woods as old as the forest itself. And both animals, for all their strength, walk a fragile path today. Bison have made a comeback, but they're still vulnerable, genetically isolated, facing habitat loss, and sometimes crossbred with cattle. Gowers, too, are under threat. Poaching, deforestation, and human conflict are constant pressures. As farms expand and forests shrink, their range disappears inch by inch. So, what's the verdict? Which of these giants is stronger? Well, that depends on how you define strength. If you're talking raw muscle mass, gowers have the edge. They are denser, taller, and pound for pound more imposing. But if strength means resilience, surviving extinction, rebounding from the brink, and standing tall in the face of erasure, then the bison is in a league of its own. If strength means silence and presence, the gower wins. If it means enduring blizzards and bullets, the bison takes the crown. But maybe that's the wrong question. Maybe instead of asking which is stronger, we should ask, what do these animals teach us? The bison teaches us the power of community, that even in vast open spaces, survival is a shared effort. The strength is not loud, it's collective. The gower teaches us the importance of presence. The standing your ground, quietly, confidently, is its own form of power. That in a world that often rewards the fastest and loudest, there's value in stillness. And together, they remind us that the world is full of giants, each with their own code, their own way of walking the earth, their own wisdom, shaped by wind or jungle, snow or monsoon. 
So the next time you see one grazing in a field or vanishing into forest shadows, don't just see muscle, see memory, see myth. Because whether it thunders across the plains or watches from behind the trees, strength wears many shapes. And these two might be the finest examples of all.